Hi, it's Alex. Today I want to talk about this delicate balance between two things. On the one hand, living life with no regrets, and on the other hand, living without being in denial of bad decisions that you may have made. There's this concept in psychology of a type of bias that a lot of people can exhibit. It seems to be a pretty universal thing, that if people have given up more to get something, they erroneously think that the thing is more useful or more valuable or higher quality than it actually is. A simple example of this is price. Like if people go to a store and they buy the same product, and, and one person buys it for a higher price, the person who paid more for it will erroneously think that it is higher quality. And companies can game this. They can take products, and pat, like the same product, package it in a fancier way, sell it for a higher price, and get away with selling a lower quality product. I run RateT.com, a tea rating website, and I've tried hundreds of teas and reviewed them, and I see companies doing this all the time. It's a very common thing in business. This same phenomenon, though, can play out on a broader or deeper scale, like with bigger projects, and things other than money. Like another example of this is hazing rituals. One of the reasons that I've seen proposed of why certain groups will have these hazing rituals that can get very intense and sometimes dangerous, is that if people have gone through this hazing ritual to become part of some sort of club or group or organization, they will think and feel like that membership is worthwhile, because they have gone through so much and like given up so much to be part of this group. Whether or not the group is actually offering any inherent value to them, it may offer some value, but the point is that if they have gone through that hazing ritual, they will often feel like it's more valuable than it actually is. I've seen this when I do business with other businesses. Like, I ran a computer consulting company for three years when I lived in Cleveland, and I did database design for a lot of small organizations. And one thing that I saw over and over again is that I would come in, and I would be giving a quote on a project about like developing a custom database for them. And a lot of companies would already have a database that was designed by another company, and or they might have one that was sort of in progress, like they have paid money towards developing this thing, and it was under construction, so to speak. And I was shocked at how expensive some of these other solutions were, and how primitive they were. Like, they weren't really great software, they weren't doing what the people would need. And in some cases, I would see a database system that a company had put down $10,000 for, or twenty or $30,000 for, and I would be thinking to myself, I could make something better than that in a weekend. I could make something better than that in a few days, and I could make a hefty profit and charge them $2,000 or less for the same product, or for a better product. And I was thinking about why this was. I don't necessarily think they were getting ripped off, like, when I looked at what was going on, the technology was rapidly changing. There were a lot of software tools that I had available that weren't available 10, 15, 20 years ago. Like, a good example is uh, Microsoft Access, that was one tool that I used. On back-end databases, there was MySQL, PostgreSQL, these were new pieces of software, and they were getting rapidly better. And there were these existing companies that were based off older technology, and they had a business model, they had people who knew how to use these older technologies, they were doing the best they could, and in many cases that meant creating a piece of software that might do certain things and cost twenty or thirty thousand dollars to develop. And I was coming in with this new technology and kind of undercutting that. And what happened is that I found that a lot of these companies were really vested in these old solutions, because they had put so much money, and often time, into them. And they often also had established business relationships with the people who were programming these systems. They trusted them, they knew that they were competent at what they did, and it sort of makes sense. I mean, these people have had careers going, they had businesses set up, and I understand that, like, they're good people, they're good business people, it's kind of hard to give up on all that. Um, but at the same time, 
I saw a number of companies that would insist on sticking with these old products that were clearly inferior, and avoid new products that could have saved them a lot of money. This is an example of how people can get caught up in this sort of bias, this bias that a lot of us have, and make decisions that are not good for them. Now, how does this relate to the idea of living with no regrets? Well, we all make decisions that don't turn out to be ideal for us in the long run. Like, when I look back over my life, there are all sorts of little things, and there are big things where I'm like, ooh, I said that thing, I did that thing, it didn't turn out the way I thought it would, it didn't turn out how I wanted. Um, and sometimes they can be really painful. Like, I know people who have been through divorces, I know people who went to college, and went through several years of college only to drop out, and have accru accrued huge amounts of debt, but then they didn't get a degree, and they didn't feel passionate about what they were doing, and then the debt goes with them through the years, maybe they have to go to college a second time before they get a degree in a different field. That's an example of these types of like big regrets that people can have. At the same time, like it's often emotionally healthy if we can have this attitude of living life without regrets. Like, if I'm sitting here thinking, oh my god, all these bad choices that I made, if I'm like focusing on those things, I can get really bogged down, and I can become seriously depressed. I've struggled with pretty serious depression myself, and focusing on the negative, it doesn't just put you in a gloomy mood, it can lead to mental illness in some people. So this idea of like living life without regrets, focusing on the positive thing, and focusing on the positives that we've taken from things, can be really empowering and supportive. So how do we synthesize that, though, with this other observation, that there are these biases that we have? Like, if I'm just sitting here, and I'm, I'm always attached to the idea that any decision that I've made in the past is necessarily the best decision, or the right decision, I think that's really problematic. Like, that can lead me to avoid introspection, and avoid looking at ways I may have harmed others, may have harmed myself, or may have made bad financial decisions, decisions that weren't great for all sorts of aspects of my life. I want to see those things, I want to grow as a person. I think that the way that you synthesize these things is by implementing this living with no regrets, not in terms of thinking, oh, any decision I've made has to be a good one, but in terms of thinking, okay, I can learn from any decision I've made. I've had two relationships in the past where I have moved in with someone, thinking that this was going to be something leading to like lifelong commitment, marriage, hopefully, and then those relationships didn't work out. And that was really painful for me. But if I'm sitting here thinking, okay, is this a good decision, right decision, wrong decision, I don't think that's the best framework to think about those things in. I find it much more useful if I think, okay, what can I take from these situations? Like, living with no regrets, for me, it's not about saying that I'm always making the best decision, and that they're decisions that I would make again, it's about saying like, I can learn from anything in the past, and I can focus on the positives, both in terms of like, the things about those past situations that did turn out well for me, and also, when there are things that were painful or didn't turn out well, looking at that in terms of like, personal growth, like what insights have I gained? How can I protect myself from some of these things in the future? This is what I think of in terms of like, living with no regrets, and how I reconcile these two things. I hope you find this useful, um, these are things that I think come up again and again in life, um, yeah, thank you.